Echinoderms feature two major structural features in the deuterostomate lineage. A system of internal calcified plates in early echinoderms that later give rise to an internal skeleton and a water vascular system. The latter consists of a network of water-filled canals that lead to extensions called tube feet. This system functions in gas exchange, locomotion, and feeding. South America's Amazon breeds acres of jungle swampland, mimicking conditions in the age of Eusthenopteron. And with the swamps, a host of unusual life forms. Among them, the lungfish, a mud-dwelling creature. This fish has gills, but it also has lungs for breathing air. In such murky water, oxygen content is often very low. The lungfish probably developed lungs to breathe oxygen from the air when the supply in the water was depleted. This sequence shows embryonic development of three tadpoles, Xenopus, over 18 hours. Note that during the early cell divisions, the size of the embryo does not change. This view inside a chick egg demonstrates the complexity of an amniote egg. Extra embryonic membranes protect the growing embryo, while the yolk sac provides nourishment. The blood vessels and beating heart of this embryo are clearly visible. On the outside, the amniote egg has a leathery or a brittle calcium impregnated shell that retards evaporation of fluids from inside, but that permits the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The evolution of the amniote egg allows a lineage of tetrapods to control water loss and thus to exploit a wide range of terrestrial habitats. Cardone cactus in the Mexican desert. They are angiosperms and reproduce sexually in the desert, cacti minimize water loss by opening their flowers only at night and for a few hours in the morning. That creates a problem. Pollen is commonly moved by flying insects, like bees. But most flying insects are not equipped to find a flower in the dark. So who will carry the pollen? Nectar-eating bats are the answer. They can find open flowers in the dark. The bat feeds on nectar from the flower, rubs against the flower's anthers, and accumulates pollen in its fur. While they use sound echolocation to find their way, these bats use their eyes and a good sense of smell to find the open flowers in the dark. At another flower, the pollen the bat is carrying rubs off on the flower's stigma. A bat is a homeotherm with a high surface-to-volume ratio. For its size, it uses a lot of energy just to live, and more if it is to reproduce. The sugar-loaded nectar in the cactus flowers is enough to keep the bat going, but a single bat will visit over 100 flowers in a night to get enough nectar. It is an example of mutualism. The bats make a living, and the flowers move their pollen. <laughs> 